Evolution has granted us some remarkable adaptations, from opposable thumbs to enlarged brains, but there are plenty of things about our physiology that can seem downright strange. Here I'll identify and explain why our bodies do 10 things that, on second thoughts, are extremely odd. Amazing! Number 10. Seeing stars or squiggly lines. Everyone is familiar with floaters, and I'm not talking about those things you leave in the toilet. Floaters is the name for those odd squiggly shapes you occasionally catch in your peripheral vision. Also known as muscae volitantes, Latin for flying flies, these are the results of changes that happen in the vitreous humor, the gel-like interior of the eyeball. As we age, this gel can become more or less fluid, resulting in slight imperfections and variations in the reflection of light through the vitreous humor, which in turn creates these globby shapes in our vision. Additionally, we're all familiar with the cartoon trope of seeing stars, and this can be traced back to the retina, the cellular-rich area at the back of the eyeball. When overstimulated, these cells, called phosphenes, excite and cause brief flashes. Number 9. Crying and Tears Crying might seem like a universal human trait, but even since the days of Darwin, who thought of crying as purposeless, there is still a lot of mystery around why we shed tears for emotional reasons, with theories ranging from the plausible to the downright bizarre, such as the 1960s conjecture that it's a byproduct of our evolution from aquatic apes. Many animals tear up as a response to pain or to irritation, but we're the only species that cries because of our feelings. New evidence suggests that perhaps there's a social bonding effect, whereby our tears signal to others of our genuine sadness or distress. Logically, this makes sense, as they're not easily faked. They blur our vision, essentially handicapping us from any aggressive behavior or defensive actions. Intuitively, crying then signals to others that you require their support, ultimately increasing your chance of survival. Alternatively, another similar study looked at the 160 different molecules found in tears and found that emotional tears contained more protein than non-emotional tears. These chemicals were linked to high stress levels, so it has been deduced that crying also helps to relieve stress but the research is still limited and not yet conclusive. The same study also dispelled the myth that a good cry has a cathartic effect. In most cases, we tend to feel just as crappy afterwards, so the next time you feel blue, maybe try another approach. Number 8. Tanning and Sunburns Who doesn't like a healthy glow? Our skin is both our largest and one of our most versatile organs, and tanning is its response to increased exposure to ultraviolet radiation. In fact, there are two kinds of ultraviolet rays that can affect our skin, UVA and UVB. UVA is a higher frequency and penetrates to our epidermis, where it triggers special cells called melanocytes. These melanocytes are responsible for producing the pigment melanin, which darkens the skin, thereby offering more protection against UVB spectrum radiation, which causes sunburns. Why do your sunburns hurt so much? Aside from the fact they are signaling damaged tissue, New studies have also pointed to a special protein related to our body's immune response. Number 7. Lividity and Rigor Mortis A bit on the macabre side, the condition of rigor mortis is the relative stiffness that occurs in our muscles after death and is instrumental in forensic science for determining the time of death. When we die, all the muscles in our body tend to contract, and this is due to a loss of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, the energy our body uses in its metabolic processes. This usually sets in within the first two hours of death and can cause the facial muscles to constrict into a grimace. This can last upwards of 18 hours, at which point the body returns to a flaccid state, but probably dispels the myth of people dying with a smile on their lips. Lividity, on the other hand, is the presence of bruising. When the heart stops, blood is naturally pulled by gravity and pools which produce bruising and discoloration and can give critical clues as to where or how a person died. Number 6 drippy nose. Winter is a time for sniffling, but there's a good reason behind our nose's tendency to drip in cold weather, and it's a mixture of biology and thermodynamics. Our nasal cavity is designed to warm and humidify the air we take in, and in order to do this, it requires moisture. However, when it's extremely cold outside, the air is much drier, and the nose has to work over time to produce fluid. At the same time, when we exhale through our mouth, the warm air we expel condenses in the cold air especially around the tip of our nose, causing drops to appear. Not exactly rocket science. Number 5. Goosebumps Whether you've ever been scared or surprised or cold, we all know that sensation of our skin prickling. Goosebumps, or piloerection, is a reaction related to the sympathetic nervous system. 
the same one responsible for our fight or flight response. Many biologists think the real purpose of goosebumps probably harkens back to when we were a bit hairier and the stimulation of muscles close to the skin would have caused us to bristle up, thereby looking larger to potential predators or competitors. It's also possible that this vestigial reflex would have increased the space between individual hairs and given us a certain degree of insulation. Number four, blue balls. Certainly more evocative than its technical classification of epididymal hypertension, this male-only condition is marked by pain in the scrotum and testes, and there's some hard science behind this appellation for not getting some. As a man becomes aroused, blood pools in the sexual organ and lingers there. However, if this state of arousal becomes protracted and ejaculation isn't experienced, it can lead to tension which becomes painful. So if you are part of the percentage of men who are susceptible to this condition, don't worry too much. The hypertension goes away on its own, but you might be walking funny for a few hours. On the topic of genitalia, another male-only problem has always been morning wood, and it too has a pretty logical function. During REM sleep, the body releases norepinephrine, which controls the arousal of the penis. Simultaneously, arousal also shuts the urinary tract, preventing us from wetting ourselves in our sleep. Now you know why you have to pee so badly in the morning. Number three, ice cream headaches. That dull ache behind your eyes when you drive into a Sunday is pretty much an occupational hazard for ice cream lovers. Those headaches are rooted in the sensory organ of the palate on the roof of your mouth. When it's exposed to a sudden change in temperature, say a scoop of rocky road, your brain reacts and causes the blood vessels around the palate to constrict and sends a flush of warm blood toward the brain, producing a stabbing sensation. So what's the best way to avoid them? Simply keep the ice cream on your tongue and away from the roof of your mouth. Although widely experienced, it took until 1988 for the International Headache Society to give it a proper classification called cold stimulus headache. Although I prefer the easily pronounceable medical term, sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. Say that 10 times in a row. Number two, wrinkled fingers. Stay in the bath long enough and you'll notice your fingers and toes wrinkling up. This has to do with the layer of the skin called the stratum corneum, which is rich in a protein called keratin, the same substance that makes up your nails and hair. This protein loves water, however, and because the stratum corneum is thickest on our fingers and toes, these places end up absorbing a lot of moisture. As a result, this layer of skin becomes swollen and bunches up, just like fabric folding in on itself. Another study published in Biology Letters found a possible evolutionary advantage in this wrinkling, as it helps to drain water and increase our grip, even when both hands and the object are wet. Number one. Stretching. Almost every creature in the animal kingdom stretches, and it's something so common, we tend to take it for granted. When we've been inactive for a long period of time, for example, sleeping or working at a computer, fluid pools in our muscles and the stretching reflex helps us to massage fluid back into a normal position. At the same time, our muscles also have a built-in defense system to prevent them from overextension, and stretching pushes muscles outside of their normal range to help our brain readjust to their proper position. Stretching also helps to increase the elasticity of our tendons and muscles, and though it has become a rote activity for athletes as a warm-up, one 2013 study found that stretching before working out could actually decrease muscle mass. Some aspects of our physiology certainly seem to defy logic, and others can be just plain annoying. Nevertheless, there's usually a good reason behind the things our body does. Can you think of any other strange bodily functions we missed? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a like and subscribe. We'll be making more videos like these in the future. It helps keep you notified. Thanks for watching.